just that. Good morning. I am Justin Parker, Director of Veteran Services here at Jacksonville State University. Thank you for coming out today to celebrate those that have served our country here in our local community. Please stand for the presentation and posting of the colors and the playing of the national anthem. Please be seated. Please join me in welcoming Albertha Grant, City Administrator for the City of Jacksonville to the podium. Albertha. Good morning. It is a pleasure for me to stand on behalf of our Mayor, Mayor Johnny Smith, and welcome you to this Veterans Day celebration. I am the spouse of an Army veteran, so I know firsthand the importance of veterans and the contributions and sacrifices they made and continue to make to secure the freedom that each of us enjoy today as Americans. We are the land of the free and the home of the brave because of brave men and women who are willing to put their lives on the line that we may be free. Thank each of you for being here to honor our veterans today. And to every veteran, thank you for your service. Again, you are welcome to this Veterans Day celebration. I will be followed now by Father Jim Handerhan, priest at St. Charles of Baramio for the invocation. Thank you. Good morning. 
Today we are here to honor those who have served our country and given their lives so that we, we may stand here and still live in freedom. We need to be constantly reminded of our gift of freedom and of those who gave all, all to make sure future generations continue to know life in a free democratic society. Those who are gone created a clear pathway for us to continue on. We must never, never waver from the path of freedom and democracy. Take their memories, take their dreams, walk forward shouldering, shouldering the cause of freedom. Carry it high and proud. They did, and now you, you must walk for them and for our children. And so let us pray. God of peace, we pray for those who have served our nation and who have laid down their lives to protect and defend our freedom. We pray for those who have fought, whose spirits and bodies are scarred by war. Those nights are haunted by memories, too painful for light to show. We pray for those who serve us now, especially for those in harm's way. Shield them from danger and bring them home. Turn the hearts and minds of our leaders and our enemies to the work of justice and harvest a peace. Spare the poor. Lord, spare the poor. May the peace you left us, the peace you gave us, be the peace that sustains, the peace that saves us. Christ Jesus, hear us. Lord Jesus, Hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Father Handerhan, for today's invocation and for your service in the U.S. Army. Next, we have the Mountain Street Brass Quintet's tribute to our veterans as they play the Armed Forces Salute Medley. If you are a service member or a veteran, please rise when you hear your branch's song.
I would like to invite to the podium Dr. Charles Lewis, Vice President of University Advancement, to give today's opening remarks. Dr. Lewis. I am pleased to welcome you on behalf of President John Beeler to this event that celebrates the service and sacrifice of the men and women who have served this great country over the decades so that all of us can enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. While I am not a veteran, I am the proud son of a father who served his country with pride during the Second World War. He was part of Patton's push across Europe and told stories of the impact that his service had on his life, like the time he and others were lost behind enemy lines for several days at the Battle of the Bulge. He was a proud patriot who flew an American flag in his front yard every day and wore his flag lapel pin every time he put on a suit. He had only a third grade education, but you would never know it from the way that he spoke, wrote, and reasoned. I firmly believe that it was his military service that profoundly shaped the rest of his life and was instrumental in any success he obtained. Today you will hear remarks from two of our veterans about how the military and JSU have created a foundation for success in their lives. Jacksonville State University is proud to have a storied history of graduating young men and women who have become leaders in military service, and in their civilian life after their service. We're especially pleased to have established a veteran center that serves military connected students and provides the knowledge, guidance, and encouragement for these students to pursue their educational and career aspirations. As you have heard many times since the tornado, we are JSU strong and through our current military connected students and our alumni veterans, there is no doubt that we are JSU stronger. Again, thank you for attending this important event on the JSU campus, and may we never forget the debt of gratitude we owe to our veterans. We are here today to celebrate the service of those who answer the call to serve our great country. When you talk with service members, both current and past, you will hear some amazing and powerful stories about their experiences in the military. The best way to understand these experiences of our local service members is to hear from them directly. Please turn your attention to the screen. To me, service was all about family values. My grandfather retired out of the Army as a command sergeant major, serving 35 years. Um, he had seven MOSs on his DD-214, and if you don't know what that is, that's kind of like your life story while you serve. My dad was in the artillery unit. He went to Fort Seal, which was kind of cool because I got to follow kind of in his footsteps a little bit. Ever since I was, I'd say, five, six years old, I always knew I wanted to be in the military. It was a calling for me. My service provided an opportunity for me to provide for my, for my family. And it's still, in, it's still providing today. I, I may, I'm able to go to school and get, you know, get my degree and it's, gonna, and it's gonna provide a career. I started in JROTC. My sister and my brother was in JROTC. It just seemed kind of the thing to do. So, um, but while in there, I learned discipline, we had to shine our boots, wear our uniform every Wednesday. And while there, I spoke to a recruiter. I always knew I wanted to go to college, so I figured, why not go to college and have a job at the same time? And so that National Guard was a no-brainer to me. No regrets. My service to me means that I have done something um, positive in, in, in a world where you see a lot of uh, negatives. I learned to appreciate that the freedoms that we have in the United States 
were given to us on the backs of many others. And I felt honored to have the opportunity to serve my country. There were opportunities for me that I would not have gotten uh, without the military. The military to me is a great, uh, one of the great prides in my, in my life that I've been able to give something for my country. And at the same time, I have received more back than I ever gave. As you can see, there are some common themes associated with service, country, family, purpose, and pride. The service members of JSU and its surrounding areas feel a strong connection to their military heritage and their local community. At this time, I would like to introduce current JSU student and Navy veteran Monica Epler to the podium to talk about how her experiences in the military and at JSU have prepared her for success in life. Monica. Good morning. First off, thank you all for the opportunity to be your student veteran guest speaker today. My name is Monica Epler and I am currently enrolled here at JSU in the Collaborative Special Education Program. While I have shifted my career focus to teaching, I have not left my military career behind completely either, as I am still serving in the Navy Reserves. As I began my transition from active duty in 2016, I was nervous for what civilian life would hold. I chose to move to Jacksonville and attend JSU for their recognized education program and have found so much more than that over the past few semesters. As I began school, I found that the military had in fact prepared me for success in college. It taught me to be prepared and to have integrity and to, of course, be 15 minutes early every place I go. Only halfway through my degree, my time here has already started preparing me for life after college. It has begun to give me the tools to be an effective educator and the confidence that I will be able to handle whatever is thrown at me. Military life is definitely one of unexpected changes and quick thinking that I am previously accustomed to. But the education program has guided me in a direction to effectively apply those skills in a classroom setting. As I transitioned from active duty, I felt like I was sort of leaving a part of my family behind. At first, I felt like kind of an outsider in the civilian world. But one thing that I have found is that no matter where you go after your service ends, and no matter what branch you served, military brothers and sisters are family from the moment that you meet. I felt like an outsider because, well, we kind of are. We have our families, we have our own supports, but we are each other's families as well. Being states away from my own family in California, the military presence on this campus, campus has been a huge part of my success at JSU. I expected for the Navy to prepare me to be successful and for college to fine tune those qualities to be a successful educator. But it is the family that I have gained on this campus and in this community that has been the unexpected part. That is, the rewarding kind of unexpected, not like unexpected bear Unexpe ugh, unexpected barracks inspections or morning PT. I look forward to my next few semesters on this campus to see how much more I grow and my family here continues to grow. So thank you to my military family, my JSU family, and of course, my own family. Most importantly, thank you to the veterans here today. Thank you for your sacrifice and your service. Lastly, thank you to all the families of the veterans, because as we all know, it's the support of our families that make all this worth doing. Thank you. Um, thank you, Monica, for your willingness to share your experiences today and for your service in the U.S. Navy. Next, we will hear from Gus Edwards, JSU alumni and elite Letterman member about his experiences in the military and at JSU have prepared him for success in life. Gus. Thank you, sir. Uh, this may be the only time you'll hear Billy Ray Cyrus and Colin Powell referenced in this same speech. Uh, also, I'll be practicing that key to successful public speaking, brevity. So, uh, thank you for inviting me here today. 
to return to my alma mater in this role is a special privilege. It's also very humbling. Um, through JSU's ROTC program, 1,540 cadets have been commissioned since 1947, and that includes me. Nine have been killed in the line of duty. My hope is I represent them in a worthy way. Veterans Day honors all who have served in our nation's military forces. This includes killed and wounded in action, retirees, and those who, like me, did their duty, returned to civilian life. Most of us were volunteers. We willingly agreed to go anywhere at any time to do any mission so lawfully ordered, no matter what the risk or how dangerous it was. Uh, we were truly the ordinary doing the extraordinary. I like to think of us, it, Veterans Day covers everybody from Audie Murphy to Brad Kirby, who is my siding contractor uh, and, a, and a Marine who served in Desert Storm. Uh, in that sense, as Billy Ray Cyrus said, all gave some, some gave all. My experience, experiences at JSU were key in preparing me to go on active duty as an Army Infantry Officer. I was very involved in ROTC and my fraternity. Both organizations taught me that in order to be an effective leader, I had to serve both my subordinates and my superiors. Oh, next page. Also, lifelong friendships were made here. They're still flourishing today. A good example is the Elite Letterman's Club. And yes, I am one of those guys that marches in the parade with the leather helmets on, red football pants, no shirt, letter paint, paint on their chest. Uh, all of us are ROTC graduates and, of course, veterans. Uh, the old saying, it's not what you know, but who you know, rings so true. Career networking begins in college. I have benefited personally and professionally from my relationships I've developed here as an undergraduate. Uh, after I left the military, because of my good friendship with Bill Huggins, I was able to become a military contractor in Kuwait. Um, and that was directly because of I knew him. My military experience helped, but definitely I knew Bill, and he took care of me. Campus involvement is an important part of higher education. All right, the, five, the Army taught me five key life lessons. The first was that my fellow soldiers came from many diverse backgrounds, but ultimately, we were all Americans. And that's a big deal when you look, you're in a foreign country and you're seeing signs that say, American, go home. That was enough to bond us together. Second. I learned nothing is worth losing my temper over. Self-control is essential in leading others. Three, stay positive. Remember what Colin Powell said, perpetual optimism is a force multiplier. Fourth, I personally need benchmarks in life. For me, it was graduating from ranger school. Uh, no, now, today, no matter what the situation, how tough it gets, I look back and I say, hey, I made it through that, I can make it through this. And fourth, um, excuse me, fifth, I learned to practice excellence daily. I used to get very frustrated. We'd go out and we'd train, we'd do the same task again and again and again. The Army has these standards, task condition standards that you had to meet. And Man, you just go, wow, let's move on. But I realized that through repetition and meeting standards, doing your best every day, and when it comes, when you have to do your job in real life, it's automatic. It's, it's second nature. Okay, I want to mention the Director of Veteran Services, Justin Parker, and his office. They take care of 
uh, over 7% of the student body here in terms of meeting their needs education-wise. Their mission is three-pronged. First, of course, the veterans who are receiving their new GI Bill benefits. Then, second, the dependents of these veterans who have received their GI Bill benefits from their parents who are veterans. And finally, those who are receiving an education the state is paying for because their parents, mother, father, have a 40% or more disability rating. 7%, that's a lot of folks that this, sir, this office takes care of. They deserve a lot of credit. That, when I was in school, that, the case load was not nearly that big. That's a big mission to fulfill. All right, in closing, I'm proud that I serve my country. I'm proud that I'm a JSU alumni. Uh, the military, the Army gave me so much more than I gave, back, gave to it. I, I can't emphasize enough. Just recently, I got hearing aids from the VA. So uh, I want to thank you all for letting me speak here today. It's a great honor. If, if you told me back in 1983 when I got commissioned and graduated in 84, I'd be up here speaking, I'd be thinking you all were crazy. But here I am, and again, thank you. Thank you, Gus. And I'd like to send out a special thank you to everyone who helped plan today's event. Uh, this celebration would not be a possibility without all of your hard work. Uh, now please join us for the plane of Amazing Grace. Please rise for the benediction by Father Handerhan and the retiring of the colors. Father Handerhan. We remember today those who have come before us and given the greatest gift of our democracy, our democratic nation, their lives, their duty, their honor, and their lives are precious gifts that must be given, given on to the future of our country and our families. The duty of our veterans, past and present, is the fiber of the word freedom, and it's stronger by our recognition of service and sacrifice. We honor the service and sacrifice today and should carry it forward for our children to honor. Freedom and democracy are the result of all the most honorable this country has, to, has produced. Today we stand to remember the most honorable among us, and we must continue to carry the burden of their sacrifice, lest we lose sight of what true freedom is. And so let us pray. God of compassion, God of dignity and strength, Watch over the veterans of the United States in recognition 
of their loyal service to our nation. Bless them with wholeness and love. Shelter them. Heal their wounds. Comfort their hearts. Grant them peace. God of justice and truth, rock of our lives, bless our veterans, these men and women of courage and valor, with a deep and abiding understanding for our profound gratitude. Protect them and their families from loneliness and want. Grant them lives of joy and bounty. May their dedication and honor be remembered as a blessing from generation to generation. Blessed are you, protector and redeemer, our shield and our stronghold. Amen. Please remain standing for the retention of the colors. <laughs> 